Today we're going to talk about black clouds and white clouds. What is this, you might ask? In medicine, there's a common belief that some doctors are black clouds and some are white clouds. A black cloud is described as a doctor that has disproportionately more admissions and more medically complex patients with higher acuity situations during their shifts. A white cloud is the opposite, and the doctors have disproportionately fewer admissions, their patients are more straightforward, and have lower acuity situations during their shifts. The belief is so strong that some have tried to study if there is some truth behind this belief. Peer-reviewed journals such as JAMA Pediatrics, Annals of Internal Medicine, HAND, the BMJ, and Pediatric Emergency Care have published some of these studies. Let me just read some conclusions from these studies. Surprisingly, black cloud interns admitted 24% more patients than those labeled as white clouds. Black cloud interns admitted an average of 0.8 more patients per call night, a statistically significant difference with a p-value equaling 0.013. At present, it must suffice to state that the cloud color has some foundation that, perhaps like the weather, is understood metaphysically more than factually. Being a black cloud does not correlate with workload. In this study, apparent black cloud and white cloud physicians could be explained by random variation in hospital admissions. Actual workload, as measured by a number of either admissions or patients, did not vary significantly amongst the residents. The findings from this prospective 35-month confirmation study did not support the common perception that physicians or nurses may be either black clouds or white clouds. I'm going to stop right there and have you look at this image. This might seem like an unnecessary tangent, but it will make sense in a second. This was taken by the Voyager on Valentine's Day, 1990, 6 billion kilometers from Earth. That mode of dust suspended in a sunbeam is Earth. It is the furthest image of Earth that has ever been taken. Now with that speck of dust in your mind, state the null hypothesis of studies that investigate the black cloud. The universe does not care about what shift Dr. Doe is on. The universe does not monitor his schedule to ensure more neonates get fevers, that people have bowel perforations, that more people develop appendicitis, nor cause more women to go into preterm labor during his shift. How rare would the data need to be for you to think the universe intervenes to make more people ill on Dr. Doe's shift? Apparently, the authors and peer reviewers of the studies I read thought a 1 in 20 chance was rare enough. That's the notorious 0.05. The air of inference is so obvious it's laughable. Dr. Doe could be terribly unlucky to have almost all of his shifts for his entire career filled with more admissions and complexity than his peers, but I would still call it unlucky. Now don't get me wrong, I think it's important to study what factors drive admission rates and high acuity, such as time of the year, week, and day. That information can be used to help scheduling in an attempt to spread the workload more equally. What concerns me is the lack of critical thinking skills around the very idea of a black cloud. Putting a p-value to a black cloud study is vacuous signaling. If we are this bad when the air of inference is so obvious, then imagine all the medical literature where it is much more subtle, but the results are far more consequential. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, stay donkey.